In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. The Chaplain's Report, you may remember that we sort of rebooted our series that we actually started before my month-long hiatus came about. And we were talking about Daniel. And specifically, his dealings between Nebuchadnezzar and then his friend Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and their dealings with Nebuchadnezzar. And there's something that I want you to notice in all of these stories. Nebuchadnezzar is somebody that is sort of, as Paul would have put it, swayed to and fro by every new wind of doctrine. He doesn't have a lot of consistency. He doesn't have a lot of firmness in his life to where he has something that he really believes in and sticks to it. It seems as though he's a very impulsive person. And the reason that I say that is you'll remember that he was very hostile to outside religions, going so far as the men that were going to serve him had to change their names to reflect something that honored his gods, not their gods. And they had to eat certain foods and be prepared and basically bathed in the Babylonian culture. And so this was somebody that was very hostile to outside religions. And yet, when Daniel interprets his dream, he starts taking a very different approach. He talks about how he understands that Daniel is a messenger of God, how the power of, of God is really in him, and he seems to have a pretty firm grasp, maybe not a total grasp, because keep in mind he's coming from a pagan background, but he seems to at least understand that God is all-powerful, that he is in control, and that Daniel is his servant, which is you know further than a lot of people might get. And so we ought to commend Nebuchadnezzar on that. But then just a couple chapters later, we're having him order under penalty of death everybody to worship an idol that he has made and anybody that refuses to worship his idol must be thrown into a furnace and we all know the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they disobeyed he throws them into the furnace they were saved after that miracle takes place though Nebuchadnezzar does again a complete 180 instead of being very hostile to outside religions and hostile to God he now has an understanding of God and an appreciation for him and his power. And he seems to have the right ideas. And unfortunately, this is a pattern that really continues throughout the rest of the book. And I want to take one where Nebuchadnezzar is sort of on an emotional high, and he's very grateful for the blessings that God has given him. And so for that, we're going to go ahead and go to the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. It says that Nebuchadnezzar the king to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language that live in all the earth. May your peace abound. It has seemed good to me to declare the signs and the wonders which the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Now, when you look at that verse, there's a lot of good contained within it. There's a lot of truth contained within it. What Nebuchadnezzar is saying is, is that this God, who is the Most High God, is somebody that I revere and I am grateful for his blessings. I mean, that shows some humility and it shows some gratitude. And that's something that Nebuchadnezzar in the past has not shown in great abundance. And so this is a big step for Nebuchadnezzar. And if you look at that, this is a prayer where he is praising God and saying all the right things. And that is something to be commended. However, we have the advantage of hindsight. We can look in the biblical narrative and look at the story of Nebuchadnezzar and see that unfortunately this is not something that lasts forever. And it seems as though he's the kind of person that sort of falls in and out of love with God constantly. Somebody that is really all about God and wants to do the best that he can, 
and is enjoying himself, praising God and talking about how great he is. And then, granted, this is in a book, and so sometimes we forget that real life takes place over a much longer amount of time. But we see not too far later in the book of Daniel that he's right back to being a pagan and, and sort of rejects and is hostile to God. And so because of that, I think that really acts as a stern warning to us. Because in this passage, Nebuchadnezzar is saying all the right things. All of the right things. But I don't know how sincere it is. Maybe it is sincere. Maybe he really does mean this. And maybe he only means it right there in this moment. And when the next moment comes, who knows where his loyalties will lie. This is not a life that is sustainable to honor God. And I think it's something that we all need to be aware of, that just because somebody is saying all the right things and they seem to be somebody that is really on fire for God, doesn't mean they really are. Some people like to chase emotional highs. Some people get caught up in the moment. And then they quickly fall away. This is actually a principle that Jesus talks about in his parable of the sower. You remember all the different seeds? And that there were some seeds that fell among thorns, and they started springing up, and, and it looked like they were going to be fruitful plants. But then the thorns came, and the cares of the world choked them out. Or look at the, the seeds that fell on the stone, but the birds came by and, and stole the word of God out because the seeds didn't have any root. You see, what these seeds lacked was consistency, a consistent, constant growth rate toward God. And that's really what's happening to Nebuchadnezzar here, it seems, because, spoiler alert for a book that's several hundred years old, at the end, Nebuchadnezzar still is going back and forth. We're going to see this pattern continue, that he's going to be more hostile towards God and more in error. And we're also going to see him come back and praising God. This impulsiveness is not a good thing. Constantly being swayed by whatever you're feeling right at the moment, it's not a good thing. And while it's good that you're praising God at some point, it's good that you acknowledge him and have gratitude for him and understand your own humility and your own lack of power in comparison to him, that's something that has to last. Because it's not enough just to pay lip service to God every now and then. It's something that you have to live. And unfortunately, that's something that Nebuchadnezzar really never was very good at. And I think that should cause us to reflect on ourselves and really ask ourselves, do we do this? Is this something that we engage in? I know I have. I'm guessing most Christians have too. That we will, in one breath, praise God and talk about how amazing he is and, and look at the amazing things that, that he has done in our life. And then just immediately afterward, voluntarily engage with sin with impunity. Or in the next breath, say something that God would never approve of. Sometimes it's a mistake, a slip up. Sometimes we do it intentionally and that's obviously a lot worse. But nonetheless, I think that the reason that this lesson is so important is that we need to remember that even though some people certainly have a tendency to be more impulsive and more emotional than others, I think that it's also important that we have to remember that the human heart, every human heart, is fickle. And if we do not carefully train it to be something that seeks after and hungers God every moment of every day, it's going to lead us astray. It's going to have ups and downs, and there are going to be times where we are very tempted to turn away from God, to forget all the amazing things that he's done for us, to rebel against him. This impulsiveness, it's not a good thing. I'm not saying spontaneity is never good. I'm not saying that it's not good to, you know, to, to live a lifestyle to where you have a lot of excitement and fun. I'm just saying that that shouldn't be the end goal and that we certainly shouldn't live our lives with God like that because God is a jealous God and he wants us all the time, just as any good father wants his children. He wants us to always love him, to always respect him. And that is the kind of lifestyle that we need to strive for. 
So we need to not be like Nebuchadnezzar. We need to be consistent and always be the kind of person that serves God, more like Daniel and his three friends. And if we're able to do that, then we'll be well on our way. Even if we stumble and sin occasionally, if we remember that that's the goal and that's something that we constantly work towards, then we're well on our way to being with him for eternity one day. And that will be the best and most consistent relationship with God that we will ever have. It's something that we look forward to. Stay the course, friends. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.